Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm doing a video, and this may be completely silly, but I just wanted to share my Christmas stamp collection. I've been stamping for many years, and um, I'm not one to just get rid of stamps because they've been discontinued or they've gone out of fashion, and especially with my Christmas stamps, because I can look through and see a stamp that I picked up a few years ago and just remember those projects I did, and um, it just brings me back to the season. So I thought we'd just kind of go through, and um, I'll show you what I have, and if you, got, if you see anything that you really like that you'd like to see me do a Christmas tutorial on, please leave a comment below and I'll get to as many as I can because I'm gonna leave this basket of stamps on my work table all month so you know my kids and I can make different projects as we need to and they'll just be all ready to go so um first I want to show you how I used to store my Christmas stamps I used to keep them in this case right here actually all my stamps originally used to go in this case and um, there's a little spot here for an embossing gun and all my stamps fit in here at one point can you believe that isn't that just the most adorable thing I've ever seen and then all my Christmas stamps fit in here and then uh, and then they all went on my shelf because I couldn't they couldn't be contained in there so I want to first start off with some of my favorites and these are my Christmas house mouse stamps and you can see they're well loved my kids love to stamp these out and color them um, there's the mouse painting candy canes and the uh, gingerbread house mouse that's like a favorite and I love this little wreath the holly wreath of berries and the little mouse um, kissing the little bird there. I apologize for the water pump going. Um, it is the weekend in my home and everyone's taking showers and you know using the water and stuff so it's gonna be noisy. I do apologize. This is a snowflake background that I got for 99 cents at Martin's and I love a good background stamp. I like to layer them and make up backgrounds that way. Another little house mouse. He's decorating a pine cone as a Christmas tree. How cute. I love it. Um, this is a, I like these collage stamps that make a really quick work of backgrounds and tags and even a focal point, um, the Christmas song background. That one I think was from my sister's store. Uh, doesn't have an online store. It's a store in China, Maine called Brian's Arts and Crafts. If you're ever in the area, please check it out. Um, my friend Kristen gave me this set many years ago and it's a Stampin' Up set and it's got these cute little teddy bears and uh, there's a little basket on the sled and you can put like apples or Christmas gifts or um, fruit in this little snowflake background and the sentiments are over the river and through the woods and also wishing you a holiday filled with warm memories and thankful hearts. So I really think this is adorable and it would fit on a shipping tag really well too. Uh, this is a silhouette I picked up at um, Martin's for 99 cents. They had a big shipment in at one time and I've used this for a few Christmas cards. It looks really pretty because it's a very simple card uh, to make and I think I got this one probably about five years ago. And all these house mouse unmounted ones came from a, a yard sale probably about eight years ago. This woman who owned a stamp store was getting rid of all of her stamps and all of her racks and everything. I bought one stamp shelf and I wish I bought two and that's where I got all these house mouse stamps. And I thought the uh, the mouse and the brand, the pine branch would be really pretty for Christmas. Um, and it's ironically my big batch Christmas cards. I used a generic stamp set. I didn't even use a Christmas stamp set. It's just a little Merry Christmas. And I really like this. It um, would be pretty to color. It is um, it is this vintage Santa Claus, and I got this last year at Martin's. I haven't used it yet, so I bought him. I ought to use that. Oh, this was a this is a really useful one. It's got my, my bottom shelf. My bottom stamp shelf is the uh, the Christmas shelf because I don't need to get to it all that often, and so there are dust bunnies on that one. Um, but this little label. Um, I actually used this stamp on an article that I did uh, for Scrap and Stamp Arts last year. It's just really nice because you stamp it, you just stamp like ink it up with markers and stamp it and then cut around the outside. It's super quick. It makes a really pretty little medallion for a card. This was from the, uh, it's a Studio G, it was from the dollar bin at AC Morrow Joann's 2009, um, you know, Studio G stamp. So they, I don't know if they might still have that design. This one you can see I get the 99 cent. Anything I got from Martin's is 99 cents or 50 cents. But um, I've used this inside so many of my cards. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I love how it's just a, um, it's not too formal but it is a little bit more fancy than just like a printed um, sentiment. I really like that. I've used that so much. Um, this was another dollar one from AC Moore and they probably still have these. This was doesn't have the date on it, but um, just do not open till December 25th, so it's a perfect little uh, Christmas tag stamp. Oh, another house mouse! Um, and house mouse on the kitty's head sleeping under the tree. How cute! I love it. I just, I don't know what it is. I'm usually not that cutesy of a stamper, but I love the house mouse. I think it was my friend Tracy that got me into all the house mouse stamps. 
This is an eraser that I carved the word peace on. I had carved a big block, um, a, a big angel one year, and, um, a linoleum cut, and it had cracked. I don't have it anymore, but um, I did the, I, I uh, block printed all those Christmas cards that year, and I just made the stamp for the inside. But um, I've used it other times. This works really well just with like linoleum cutters. I'll do it. I have a tutorial on that. I should do another one too. And this is just a little gift. It actually came from a birthday set, but I thought I might use it with Christmas stuff. This was um, an inexpensive, one of those sugar loaf, $1.99 at the hardware store, um, little Christmas bulb. And uh, this, I just found this at Martin's this year. It was, it says, I'm an angel at Christmas time, but the rest of the year I'm the real me. I thought that was kind of cute. And my kids really like using that one. Um, I've got some borders, and these, I believe, I purchased these secondhand from a Stampin' Up! demonstrator that was um, re revamping her stuff. Because I go, guess what happens a lot of times with Stampin' Up! demonstrators is that if it's not current, they don't keep it. And so, um, so I bought these to, because I thought they'd be great to go along the edge of an envelope or to make a border strip for a card or scrapbook page. So I think there might be more to that set in my bin here. Um, there's also some that I bought that looked like tape strips, which I got this like probably eight years ago, but it, t washi tape is so popular now that it's actually, uh, it's actually really good to have because it's really in style. Now I got a bunch of these. These were, I'm hoping I could find a, I think they may have been Anna Griffin. Um, and Anna Griffin was licensed through maybe Plaid? I'm not sure. I got this a few years ago, and I'm going to show you what I did that was uh, really handy. Uh, I don't know if this is all of them. I might come across another one. But, um, so they're like ribbon strips, and what I did was I pulled them off the block, and I, or maybe I had to mount them. I don't know if you, they came and you had to mount them, or I had to pull them off the block. But um, I put them along the edge so that they're really easy to line up because I have it lines right up to the edge. See that? So if you ever have a hard time with your stamps, you can line them right up to the edge when you mount them. Hi, honey. I'm showing off my Christmas stamp collection. My husband just came down to the craft room. <laughs> He's being very quiet. Uh, this is an ornament that I got for 69 cents at Martin's, so it was quite a bargain. I haven't used it yet, so maybe it's not a bargain. Although I think I remember using it. Maybe I just cleaned it really good. I'm not sure. <laughs> she talks back. And uh, as a little Santa Claus, it came in a set with, I think, this. And let's see, what else came with that one? Uh, I'm sure I'll come across them. Oh, here's another one of the borders from the uh, from that Stampin' Up! kit. Oh, you got to move your hand in further if you want to get in screen, honey. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't want to be on camera. I just want to sneak this in. That's Christmassy. They're all Christmassy. This is my Christmas basket. Holy cow. <laughs> Uh, I love this one. This was another Martin's find for 99 cents, and I used it quite a bit. It's a, kind of a retro-looking Rudolph with the ornaments off the antlers, and I just thought that was so fun. Um, which reminds me of my favorite Christmas paper, which is a Can Company Peppermint Twist, and I did so many cards with that paper and this stamp. When I find a, I, I will use every little scrap of scrapbook paper when I when I find something I like. Um, so of course the Noel. I don't know where that one came from. It says 99 cents on the side, so it was probably probably a craft store bargain. Um, this, uh, I think I got at Martin's for like 50 cents. This is just a border, a uh, holly and berry border, which is, I like it because it's kind of vintage looking. I think vintage looking stuff stays in style a lot longer. Um, I've got some snowflakes. I just used these on my clay ornament tutorial. And the reason I actually got all these out was because I knew I had another snowflake that looked kind of crocheted. And I really wanted to use that on my ornaments. So I pulled everything off my stamp shelf in the uh, Christmas on the Christmas rows. And I could not find it. And then finally, when I was going through all my stamps to pull out all my Christmas stuff, because it was kind of irritating me that I couldn't find it. I'm kind of, I'm not really like a type A personality, but if I can't find something I know I have, then I, it kind of brings it out. And I found it. And it's right here. This was the one I wanted to use on my Christmas ornaments too. And that was another, you know, 99 cent craft store stamp. So it doesn't matter what you pay for a stamp. You should really, you know, consider if you're really going to use it or not. Um, this one came with that little uh, Santa I showed you that I said was part of a set. Little, just a little vignette. I don't know, these aren't ones I, I tend to use so much, but I think because it was part of a set, there was a couple I really liked in the set, so I grabbed the set. Um, a little gingerbread Santa Claus. Which I thought was cute. I like the steampunk ornament. This was another Martin's 99 cent stamp. I thought it was really, really fun. And I've used it quite a few times, so it's actually, uh, it's actually paid off. Um, this was one of the Studio G dollar stamps. I just like that, uh, the solid stamp. It's very easy to get a good impression and to get a lot of color and impact down for very little effort. This is a favorite. This is a vintage Santa Claus face from Rubber Stampede, and I've used that quite a bit. 
vintage means um, old fashioned kind of looking. Um, and oh, I've got a couple other ones that came from sets that um, I've kind of pulled apart because not all the stamps in the set were Christmassy. So I've got these are different Stampin' Up from different Stampin' Up sets that I've just kind of pulled out. And this is also from a Stampin' Up set that has all four seasons and I like that snowman's and I want to make sure I it got used. Now when I get stamps that are like unmounted, I will put them on Jenga blocks and um, here I've done that with Happy Holidays and To You and Yours and May Your Christmas Be Merry and Bright. I think these were all from my sentiments exactly. I got a grab bag once and it had those in it. This one gets used a lot. It's just a Christmas postmark, December 25th. And I also use this one quite a bit. It's Personal Stamp Exchange. It's Peace. I think that one was Personal Stamp Exchange too. Yeah, the, I love the Personal Stamp Exchange stamps. I wish they were still in business. I find that whatever I have from them still gets used on a fairly routine basis. So, you know, don't get rid of those stamps. If you like them, even if a company goes out of business, don't feel like you have to get rid of them. Keep them because they will be your most useful stamps. And if you ever have to go find them again, you're going to pay through the nose on eBay. Um, and there's just some more postmarks. I like the postmarks. I think they're just nice little touches to add to your cards like in the borders or when you feel like your card just needs a little something extra just stamp one of these on it and it looks really nice. I used this on my Christmas cards last year and again it's really easy because it's a circle border here um, so you could stamp it and punch it out and get a lot of little embellishments made quickly and this one is by it's a Studio G it's a dollar stamp from Joanne so you know it, it, if you see a stamp you like if it's a buck hey what do you get to lose a buck I guess if you use it, all the better. And this is another inexpensive stamp, which I looks, apparently I have not used because I usually don't clean my stamps all that well. And uh, that was another dollar one, as was this one. See, some, and sometimes I notice the cheaper ones, I, sometimes I don't use them because I forget I buy them. So that's not a good, a good thing. This was one of those stamps that came in that set that I was telling you about that I didn't like all the stamp, stamps from. But I find a lot of times the stamps that I don't like from those sets, generally they're ones that the kids will like and use. And this one I really like too. It's another postage stamp from that. And this is another one of the borders from the Anna Griffin set. And oh, this is another one from that stamp set. And so is that. That was a big set. I think it was from Martin's. It was like a couple bucks. So I, I figured even if I was going to use just two of the stamps from the set, it was worth it. This was from a set of like seasonal ones from Stampin' Up. Just a little Happy Holidays with Santa Claus juggling. And I like juggling. So I thought that was a wonderful little stamp. And oh, here's another old personal stamp exchange stamps. It was one of my first ever stamps in um, 1999. And I've used it so much over the years. It's very well used and well loved and uh, I'd love to hang on to those. Even if I don't use them that much anymore, they bring back good memories. And uh, these I think were all from a set and I've used these tons. I think they're Hero Arts, these little snowflakes. And there were quite a few little things. I think these are all from the same set. Maybe I'm thinking of two different sets. It could be. It's been a while. Some more little snowflakes and ornaments. Um, this one was, I bought this, I have stamped it out a few times, cut those presents apart and used them in cards, but this is honestly is one that I probably wouldn't have bought again. If, you know, I kind of look at my stamps, would I buy it again? This probably would, would have been a no, but that's the only one out of this group, really. Um, it's another one of those border stamps. It looks kind of like a stitched ribbon. And another sentiment, wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And this one's more of a, um, like, old typewriter font, so it can go really good with a vintage-looking card. Something's a little more casual. Casual. And let's see, Christmas trees. It was another cheapo that I probably wouldn't buy again because I don't think I've ever used it. Oh no, I have. There's ink on it, but it's uh, it's certainly been a while. Postage stamps because I really like those. I find they're very useful. And oh, these two are really cute. And they were, I think they were in the dollar bin at Joanne's. Yeah, they're Studio G, but they're Rudolph. And you've got Rudolph and Clarice there, and then Happy Holidays, May You Play in All the Reindeer Games, and it's got that Rudolph font, like from the TV special. And you know they don't call them specials anymore. Didn't you ever call them specials as a kid? You, had to, you got to stay up and watch, watch a special. I don't think they call them specials anymore, because everything's on demand, and it's not special anymore. That's so sad. All right, so we got New Year's, because that came with a snowflake set, and uh, Joy, which is a nice little sentiment that you can put on the front or inside a card, and Peace on Earth. And these were all more of those dollar stamps that um, I really like the font. I like the vintage, semi-formal look of them, and um, yeah, they're part of the collection. This is a Hero Arts snowflake background. Well, it's kind of like a... Um, it's like a little square. You could stamp it on like glossy cardstock because it's like mostly solid. I'd recommend glossy cardstock and you could just put that on a simple card uh, or whatever. 
This is a Hero Art Snowflake. This is just a little to and from, which is handy for uh, tags and whatnot. Some more postage ones. I think I'm seeing a theme here. I like the postage stamps. More snowflakes. A nice little sentiment that can also be used um, as a front element on your card, if you, especially if you stamp it on glossy and then you, you just trim or punch around it, make a great little element for the front of your card. This one um, has, I don't think you'll be able to read the text here, it says, may peace be with, may peace be your gift this Christmas, your blessing all year through. And um, I had to read it because I wasn't really sure it was a Christmas stamp until I read the uh, sentiment. This came from a set, but it's again another little sentiment that's ca very casual and fun. And then I've got Ho 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 from a stamp set, but I've actually used it quite a bit. And we wish you a meowy Christmas, for, which I thought this would go really good with my house mouse stamps. It was an unmounted stamp, so I'm, I think it came from Viva Las Vegas stamps in a grab bag. And uh, so I thought, oh, this will be perfect with my house mouse ones, especially the house mouse stamps have the cat in it. And this was a this was given to me. It's just a cute little primitive snowman. Um, I might have to pull it off the mount and trim around it because it was must have been a there's no markings on it. it must have been a cheaper stamp because the cheaper stamps you'll notice are not trimmed around. But if I heat it with a heat gun, pull it off, I can trim around it with my uh, heavy duty scissors and it will be good as new. And this is just an ornament. You know what? I've got a little time here. Let me go get my binder and show you all my unmounted Christmas stamps. Okay, I'm back with my Christmas and winter binder, and I'll go through this a little bit quicker. Um, this is a Oriental Trading stamp set, which has Christmas lyrics on it. It's a clear stamp set. This one came from um, uh, Crate and Craft. No, what did it come from? A scrapbook and paper craft. In the British crafting magazine that I get. This was last year's Christmas stamp. Um, these are some Ink and Ink and Do Christmas stamps. That one was also from that card. It's Card Making and Paper Craft, I think is the name of that magazine, that British one. That was this year's Christmas set. Um, and again, I've got some Fiskers and some Ink and Ink and Do's. These uh, four by eight sets are very inexpensive at the craft store. I wait for sale and usually get them for about five or six dollars a set. That's Oriental Trading. These are Ink and Ink and Do bottle caps, which are really fun. Um, that I've had for years. I'm not exactly sure who it's by. Um, oh, this is my favorite out of my unmounted. It's my house mouse unmounted ones, the clear ones. And they never made many. They made a Halloween and a Christmas set and that was it. And I ordered them from my scrap local scrapbook store when they were around and I've never seen them anywhere else. And they're just fantastic. Fantastic. They stamp really well. Then I have an assortment of the dollar stamp sets, which I don't really recommend because they don't stay on your blocks very well and I kind of forget that I buy them because they were so cheap and some of the little sentiments are really handy, but I find that I really didn't use them for as much as I, you know, collected them. And then I just got some odds and ends unmounted. Oh, this is really good. This is um, a snow globe, just an empty snow globe that you can stamp whatever you want in. And there's a little one by Fiskers. It's the same idea. And then there's some little ornaments from Oriental Trading. And I love this set. I've used this tons of big snowflakes, uh, trees. This is a this is one set from Tattered Angels. Really great, uh, great images. They're, they're the cheaper stamps, but they're really fun. And then some Ink and Ink and Do borders and tickets. And um, about art accents, ornaments, and angels. And um, I, don't, I don't think I've used it. This is really pretty. No, I have used that last year. Just a little, um, the paper company unmounted rubber stamps there. More about art accents, stamps, which kind of have a little bit of an Asian flair, but they are Christmas stamps, so it's kind of fun. And we get some more kind of primitive ones. And these are my sentiments exactly. So you've got the tree and the angel that's made out of words. And um, then just some loose sentiments that didn't fit on my Jenga blocks, so they're still in here. And again, some more of my sentiments exactly. So these are like shapes, and they're just filled with like scripts, script words and stuff. And so they're just kind of a. Uh kind of neat, but I have to admit, I usually go for my wooden stamps at Christmas time. I like the convenience of them, and I like that they're pretty sitting on my shelf or in a basket, and I really think they're more of a collection. You know, they're a collection as well as a hobby, and um, and I hope you enjoyed me sharing them with you today. Again, if you have any um, requests, if you'd like to see any tutorials or projects done with any of these stamps in particular, leave a comment, and I'll do my best to get it done before Christmas, because um, I'm sure some of you guys have the exact same stamps that I do, even if they're not being manufactured anymore. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, happy crafting.